but it was the brakes every time you come to a corner and you went i just went oh my god the brakes the brakes that's why the liquid from formula one driver's eyes hits the inside of their visor well, that's crazy. because it is very healthy you know really healthy i have it literally written on the wall you know if we don't if today we don't leave in tears let's not do it let's yeah, give up yeah. what's the one thing that you've kind of most passionate about that maybe people wouldn't know because most people do know a lot about your tv life and, and what you've achieved but what's the one thing you kind of you, you go home you're uh, like i'm happy i did this uh, well the one thing that i'm most passionate about is that's the dumbest thing i've ever heard <laughs> I've always done it, guys. AJ's yeah. just broke the routine ritual. Uh, yeah. Simple as that, really. Yeah. Uh, these two fighting over who's going to yeah. smash the clapperboard. Honestly, I, I let Kurt do it. You've not even written anything on it. Yeah. <laughs> we just use it for the noise. Yeah. Shh, Mike, stop giving away our trade secrets. Yeah. Welcome back to Freedom Impact Trust. It's AJ and Curtis here, and we have got a very... I'm going to say an amazing guest, actually. This I'm, week. I'm really, I really excited am, yeah. for this podcast. We've been on his podcast. I've listened to so many of his podcasts, to be fair, and I've seen him all over the TV. I'm going to say he's the biggest automotive. Automotive? Can't even talk about it. Automotive man out there. He is an absolute legend and god in the car industry, wow. and you must have sold. Blimmin' millions of cars overall. I it's Mike you. Brewer. Well, definitely inspired people to buy cars and sell cars, that's well, for sure. I hope so. I hope so. I hope I've inspired people to uh, to have a go themselves. That's the whole aim of my Raising Detra for the last 26 yeah. years being on TV. I've tried to inspire people to get off their ass and have a go yourself. Try yeah. it. We'll, we'll talk about some of the other TV shows that you've done in a second, but we have to come down to, it, it's kind of like Mike Brewer, Wheeler Dealer. I think people kind of, it is the same sentence yeah. for a lot of people. How yeah. did that come about? Where did that start? Uh, that started a very, very long time ago, boys. You were probably still running around in nappies when <laughs> yeah. that started. Uh, so 26 years ago, I did a show on, on Channel 4 called- We were running around in nappies. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 26 <laughs> yeah. years ago, uh, called Deals on Wheels. Yes. And there was one little item in that show that I did, uh, and it was about how to buy a car, fix it up and sell it. Yeah. Uh, and I did this little breakout item within the program, and uh, it got the attention of some people. And there was two lovely guys that owned a production company uh, that sat down with me. And then we thrashed out what could be uh, a show based around that, yeah. uh, that, that model entirely about buying a car, fixing it up and selling it. And uh, we created a program. It was originally called Grand Autos because we were buying a car for a grand, fix it up and selling them. Yeah. Uh, but it very quickly evolved into Wheeler Dealers. I feel sad. Like, you know, when you like even that one sentence, I'm like, certain things that you feel like you can't really do these days. You'd be like, I should start off with, you maybe need a bit more capital to kind of, to yeah. get something for a grand uh, these days. You're like, okay, um, scrapyard's taking more money than a yes. grand. Well, I keep getting people all over the world who some people are watching the show for the first time, you know, yeah. in That's some parts amazing. of the world. It's been on for 20 years and some people look at the prices and they go, oh, you should go back to the days where you were buying a car for a grand. Yeah. It was much more realistic. And I go, it doesn't exist anymore. You can't. That, you can't. You, you'd have to go to India or yes, go to it different countries. Exist. What is the cheapest car you'd say you've ever actually bought to then flip over? Uh, well, it'd be on Wheeler Dealers Series 1, probably, yeah. which would be... Uh, I bought a little Mark 1 Mini for £300 on Wheeler Dealers Series 1. That car today would probably be worth 20 Now, Minis are very close to your heart, aren't they? I believe it's one of the first cars that you ever got, actually. Yeah, so I passed my test in a Mini. People in my generation, my age, uh, you you pass your test in a Nissan Corsa. Micra. Or a Corsa, yeah, Corsa. Yeah. right? So people in my age pass your test in a Mini. Yeah. So at the age of 17... And back then they were Minis. Well. They were Minis, yeah. yeah they were tiny yeah. little cars. And uh, at the age of 17, I realised I had a scooter at 16, little 50cc scooter, and I realised it's not much you can do with a girl. At 16, <laughs> on a scooter. Uh, so I needed a car. So um, I, I just sat patiently waiting for my 17th birthday, bought this little Mini, Irene Beige, uh, Mini 1000, uh, GJJ, 550J. Can always remember your I first love. love. That, yeah. uh, and I bought this little Mini, and my mum and dad said, and then you disappeared. And that's what happened. I got this car, and I vaporized. I disappeared. And that was my love of cars. It started right there. Beige? Beige, ear and a beige, I'll tell you. Strong it. color. Strong color back yeah, then. Yeah. yeah, I mean, listen, that car, 
is the genesis of the Wheeler Dealer you yeah. see in front of yeah. me. Uh, all my success comes from that very moment. When I bought that Mini, there was... I, there was the freedom of the road. It was the fact that I could have so much fun in this tiny little space. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, yeah. I could, <laughs> I could, I could fill it with friends. We could laugh. We could Got that, a great that little e break. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, you can, you can get in that car from South London yeah. and end up on the pier in Brighton within an hour. And you know, it's a time machine. It's a little time capsule, and it will put you places, and and it will give you fun. And then one day, I parked it outside my sister's house. And her neighbour Jan reversed out of her driveway no. in a in a Cortina Mark V 2.3 gear. Uh, she reversed out and smacked it so hard, the insurance company decided to write it off. Oh. But I and managed it is your baby as my well, baby, the first one. and I love that car. But I managed to pay twenty five pounds to the insurance company not to write it off and get it back. Oh. But they gave me the three hundred pounds for the repair. Uh, of which I had 300 quid. You know, I only paid 300 quid for the car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I had 300 quid and I'm like, wow, what do I do with 300 quid? <laughs> my, dad was a, real good. <laughs> my dad was a customizer. So I thought, well, why don't I just customize it? So I painted the roof black, painted the bonnet black, Sibby spotlights on the front, mini light wheels, changed the interior, pulled the dent out. And I ended up with a car that looked so cool that within a couple of weeks, a friend of mine offered me 800 pound for it. Oh, so wow. there I am with a 500 pound yeah, profit. I've, 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 Fall on swim pr pretty good here. Yeah, yeah 17 years of age. Uh, the average wage at the time for my parents was probably £100 a week. Mm. Uh, there I am. I've just made £500 in one transaction. And I thought, wow, I, I'm quite good at this. I'm going to do this again. So that led me on to becoming a and wheeler dealer. And I just bought and, and sold, bought and I sold, think bought one sold. thing that I, I love about this is kind of the same with us in, in retrospective in a weird way. Our, our dad was a dancer. Mm. We kind of got into dancing world and TV and entertainment. Like for you, your, your dad was in the automotive world. Do yeah. you feel like that kind of connection is kind of generational? That is what grew the excitement or was it yourself? You were like, actually, no, I, I love I, I found my love for the no, four wheels. Surely you must have been in, in, in the workspace with your dad, seeing him rip a part of a car, putting it back it's together. The, the whole it DNA and, of yeah. me is from my yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I grew up with my dad in the workshop and reluctantly, you know, from the age of seven, eight, nine, mm. uh, if my dad had to have me during the summer holidays and during the Easter break, uh, down at the workshop in Stratton, South London. Uh, that's where I was, where I really wanted to be able to park playing football with my friends. Yeah. But, you know, we had a big family. I'm the baby of six. Uh, and it was my job to go to work with my dad. And I would sit on the workshop floor in this damp, cold workshop, or even on a summer's day in South London. And he would pass me a tool, tell me to wipe it with an oily rag and put it back in the toolbox. Yeah. And then pass me a number 10 or pass me a, you know, a half inch Imperial. And uh, that's how I learned my craft. And I didn't know I was learning it. I really didn't know I was learning it. It was just instilled in me. Uh, and we would take work home. You know, there were gearboxes on the yeah. kitchen table and engines on the balcony. We lived in a block of flats. We were a very poor family. Um, but I, I started to see the, the riches that it gave my dad. My mm. dad was being, you know, people would pat him on the back and always want to meet my dad, Roger, and congratulate him on his latest build or his latest creation. And I could see that. And I hero worshipped him. I still do today. You know, he's my my hero. And to see that, you know, as a young man, you're like, I just hope that I get that respect one day, you know, when I grow up. Uh, so when I bought my scooter at the age of 16, I turned to my dad to help me customize it and modify it. It was a mod. Yeah. I wanted, you know, chrome side panels. I wanted airbrushing <laughs> on the side. So he did all of that. And it was very, that was very quickly adapted into the world of cars mm. uh, when I was 17, you know, modifying and custom, customizing my own cars. Uh, and it all come from my dad. And it still does. You know, there's probably not a decision I don't make today where I haven't phoned my dad and just spoke it through with him. And, Quick little recap. Yeah, a little Quick recap. Little, yeah. Just spoke it through <clears throat> with him and just had a chat to him about it. And he, he'll very quickly tell me that's a crap idea or, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> that's, I, love that. they, I find yeah. they always tell you straight. Mm. I do love that. And it's the memories that you create actually in it. And then that follows on through your life. Like our dad was our dance teacher. The memories I have with him in the studio, some are amazing. Some you just want to. Of course, yeah. But you know, <laughs> but that's it's... the point of a father-son relationship, yeah, is it? Or father-daughter yeah. relationship. Uh, you have to rub each other up the right way and the wrong way yeah. to see how far it can go. But, you know, I'm I'm really blessed that I've yeah. got this, uh, not only have I got this amazing uh, family, I've got an incredible family, but I've also got an amazing wife yeah. who literally 
pushes everything that I do yeah. to the to the limit. You know, she's she's sort of the throttle pedal behind me. It's so nice to see that your your business, your relationship, your daughter, like everything's always so. And even the research, like you, we come before we do this podcast, we try and get as much research as possible. And the one thing that was always at the forefront was um, successful, happy husband. Da- got a daughter like it and it's so warm and enriching so people always think like business is the biz- biggest success whereas actually it's it's the kind of being able to kind of family hold your family network. together it's family, yeah. it's, family it's always family first you know family comes first and you know success comes from I think um, that's why we love watching the shows I feel like when I watch with, you, you, you watch a show and you, you you're become, a very wholesome man it just feels you great really it's like you, you, you love to watch and you, you want the next episode or you want to kind of um, even the podcast well, we did with you it was so you can tell enjoyable. that you, one you, you know what you're on about you are in an industry where you truly are at the top of your game you know what you're on about so it's enjoyable to yeah, watch well i've done it all haven't i I've had, love the, it. I've had the broom in my yeah. hand i've done the mechanics yeah. i've done the sales i've owned the businesses i've done the lot best car that you've uh flipped over then best car that you've you've sorted out what is it that's a really good one because i get asked this question a obviously lot. the mini you said you love mini yeah the mini is my f- sort of first love but you know personally i've flipped some amazing cars mm. in my personal life i managed to buy john cooper's mini cooper yeah, uh, yeah. when i was That's in america yeah, yeah it was wild so that was a pretty good one to flip um but one of the highlights i think that stick out for me is that lamborghini Uraco that i found in poland uh that was in somebody's frozen garage and i managed to get it back here and we restored it put it on the road in the uk and um i sold it thirty five thousand. i paid twenty thousand. Sold it thirty five thousand. It's currently for sale for one hundred and fifty five thousand. Holy! So I'm not so much of a clever wheeler dealer. Right? <laughs> no, he's, but... he's, he's on to the next one. On to yeah. the next one. <laughs> on to the next one. Uh, but that was a car I was really proud of because uh, that's got mechanical fuel injection, a Lamborghini yeah. Raco, and there's probably two. We'll people... put a picture on for everyone that doesn't know what car it is, so they can see. There's what probably it is, two yeah. people alive that would know how to work on that car. Yeah. You know, and uh, we taught ourselves. We we learned it. We taught ourselves. Was an absolute pain in the backside. Oh yeah, you can't believe it. It yeah. was just hideous um, because yeah. it's it's an Italian supercar from the nineteen seventies. It is the equivalent of a Swiss watch that's frozen in time. <laughs> that, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. somebody gives you this this little trinket. And when you take it open, bits come out and you d- the oh, bits don't go back I've, in. I've never seen yeah. that before. You know, like, a, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've ever taken a laptop computer apart and explodes. Yes. And then no, you can't put it back together. Yeah. It won't go, like, well, that's what oh, the Lamborghini Rock left out. Is. You're like, this is supposed to be in there. You're yes. Like, uh, what's this bit? Or in the case of the Lamborghini Araco, what's that stuff? You know, yeah. there was tons of it left over. But we learned it. You know, we learned it. We put that car back on the road. And so much so, it's living and breathing today. It's been resold and resold. And its value today is is five times what I sold it That's for. That's so, so cool, it's, though. It's incredible. You, you're a part of that. There's yeah, I'm so part of many. That. There's thou- there are literally thousands, thousands. I want to say millions of cars out there which you've actually been a part of. Which uh, is yes. Absolutely so awesome. we, we bought and sold and flipped. Oh, I can't tell you how many cars. It's, it is thousands. Yeah. Uh, but personally, see, a lot of people think this is just Mike Brewer is the TV persona and the yeah. TV presenter. Uh, but no, I, I, this is my garage. You know, these are my vehicles here. This is another part of my, my life. I've got a, a car dealership both up in Sheffield. I've got a car dealership here in Warwickshire. Uh, I buy, sell, flip. Mike, Mike Brewer Motors. Mike Brewer Motors yep. yeah. is up in Sheffield. And this is called One Automotive. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're is, sat here now in what is... A gorgeous, awesome workshop, but I believe it was not so pretty when you. Um, no, this was got an engineering shop. <laughs> really good. One, o- one owner from New, built in the 1980s. One owner from New, full service history. I remember walking in here with my wife, uh, and you walk through this door into this collapsed office on the greasiest floor you've ever seen. <laughs> And there, you couldn't actually see the fabric of the building. It was all engineering yeah. Yeah. Um, machines everywhere. And they've been here since 1982. Uh, and it was a mess. The whole, it was thick with grease everywhere. The, whole, the walls, the ceiling, everything was thick with grease. Oh, man, um, you can see but you, you can off the floors uh, here now. Uh, yeah, you could. <laughs> so I, I, I could see it. You know, I could see the vision. I could see the building. And I thought, you know what? This is where I'm going to put my car collection, my cathedral. Uh, and this is where I'm going to build it, my, my, my space. And um, it's a nice size. 
I've got lovely tall cabinets around it. And, <laughs> you know, I spent a, a, a fortune of money making it the yeah, way I want gallery. it. We, we've been viewing talking. gallery, yeah. We were office. speaking earlier. Apparently, you're going to get a, a sim in there up there. I think. Yeah, we're going to do a, sim, bit, a sim racer. I built that balcony. Then they could create a whole little episode doing that. It's our fastest lap times. Put it on. Yeah, TikTok, what we need is little... Fasaro yeah. sim. Fasaro yeah. sim. Fasaro yeah. sim. Fasaro yeah. sim. If the, the that best. lovely company Fasaro sim supply me a sim. Supply me a sim. Fasaro sim. So the owner of Fasaro, we went and tested their sim them at them we tested their f1 sims before they announced that they, they are the official f1 and i said phenomenal. maybe speak to them about getting like a like a ford transit you know what i mean as the on an f1 track yeah, track, yeah. yeah brilliant the yeah just brilliant well they around. just had a ford transit go up pike's peak oh, uh, which was wow. a, a yeah hot rod Crazy. you know a race car full yeah, transit yeah, yeah. uh compete on pike's peak it did, i think it finished in the top 10 so uh, oh, yeah wow, get them to serious. do that the sorrow sim but I wish they would reach out to me and just supply me a blimmin' machine. Yeah. I've, I've plugged them enough. <laughs> but um, no, I actually built this place and the balcony, uh, that's cantilever, and I built it with enough strength you can put a car up there. So it, the, it, it is yeah. le legit solid. Like, I'm not worrying about that falling down. How, how, how are you going to get the car up there? Well, um, we just lift it up, you know, with a crane. With a yeah, crane yeah. yeah. But we, I actually... Uh, have, was going to put the minis up there. You know, you, I've measured it. I'm so not going to lie. That would be absolutely yeah, three minis beautiful. Up there, they would fit blue. perfectly yeah, up great, there as it? well. Yeah. yeah, it'd be really good. But um, no, this was the space that I created uh, so I could relive those moments from my dad. You know, mm. I could be in the workshop, my own workshop. Um, it was a moment which I'm sure you've had with your dad as well. There was a moment when my mum and dad come up to see me uh, last summer and uh, or the summer before actually and i walked them through the door and my dad see this for the first time and the his realization heart, his yeah, heart yeah. just went hey, yeah, let's take a moment to thank our sponsor fint yes the financial investment app that makes investing easy from as little as 50 pound a month curs oh i love that it's very good i know it is but let's get back to the pod and it, but you could see him bursting with pride again. But I think it's taking that back... It's not happened yet with my dad yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it has. <laughs> I think taking it back to like when you had that that opportunity, that first episode, the TV show kind of being like, you you never know sometimes if someone is going to be a hit or a miss. Or, or maybe back then it wasn't like the opportunity you thought this could be worldwide because the TV show is in over 200 territories. Like I was trying to find the information on viewing figures, but it was like insane, your viewing figures. Uh, yeah, they can't measure beyond 200 million, you, you, and it's well over 200 yeah, million. Yeah, and then repeats and yeah. all the other territories. But I, I, was I, he proud? What did you know that you were doing a TV show and it was going to hit like it was going to hit? Uh, yeah, when did you realize, really, wow, I've made really it? It's really weird because, <laughs> you know, when we started to put uh, Wheeler Dealers together back in 2003, so mm. we're talking 20 years ago now, uh, it was a tiny little production company, a tiny little network. Discovery Channel had only been going for five years. Yes, yeah. Uh, so it was a tiny little network, and it was grillers, you know, up in mountains, and it was people digging for gold. In mm. you know, Discovery in... Channel have changed so much, but mm. for, for the positive, they've they've really nurtured like the talent and the people that I feel like. Yeah. People yeah. watch it. They love it. They want to see it again. And again. So they come to me and said, do you want to do a car show? And this is the first ever flipping car show on the planet. There was no other car show that flipped cars on yeah. in the world. This was the original sort of concept. Uh, so yeah, me and me and Michael and Dan, we sat down and we, we created this little baby and going on to what you said, asked uh, the question about its success. Uh, I, when I made that first series, there was something that was quite magical about it. Mm. But it was so small and it was so simple. I thought, well, if we get another series out of it, that'd be incredible. Uh, and I was being paid terribly. You know, back yeah. then I was being paid terribly. But I wasn't in it for the money. I never was. I was in it for for the experience of doing something different. I was still a car dealer. Your passion. And you passion. like you've always stuck to it. And I think that's one thing we spoke about this earlier. Like you get booked to do a job and then they're like, you book me for the talent and who I am and what I stand for. And then suddenly people try and change, change you. you. And yeah. like wheeler deals with yourself, Mike. Like I speak to you now. I see you on TV. I see you at car show, British Motor Show, whatever it's going to be. You are you. You are you. And that's one thing yeah. that I value and respect so much. Yeah, I've been I, almost in the early years uh, when I was, you know, sort of still learning my craft. Every director, every producer I ever worked with tried to change me. Mm. You know, why don't you uh, be more put a full stop? 
on the end of your sentence like Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah. And I was like, that's not me yeah. and I'm not going to do it. And uh, I had another director try to uh, get me to posh up a bit and speak a bit posher. And I said, no. And, and over the years, almost successive directors and producers. Like I'm British. Have, I stick to where I am. <laughs> yeah. I've tried to correct the way I say things. Like I might, you know, I'm from South London. So I, instead of saying one, two, three, which I do now, I would go <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, hospital. And they were going, mm. no, it's got a H on the front. It's like, regional. It's yeah, not, but yeah. I'd say, look, yeah, not you know. in South London, that ain't. <laughs> not in South London, it's hosp <laughs> hospital. You know, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to hospital uh, for free visits, you know, yeah. and that's what it is. And you have to accept that that's who I am. And so I've been really, over the years, I've been really strong about not changing who I am and saying, look, you know, the reason why people are tuning into the show week after week and the audience is growing is because they clearly like the guy that they see. I yes. I'm yeah, a reflection yeah. of those people that are out there. You know, we're, we're not all publicly educated yeah, no. and been at university. I'm from the wrong side of the tracks, from a council estate in Brixton, grew up six of us in one bedroom we're working really hard. poor uh, and we are proper working class was very hard working was family. the times though that you did feel pressured and you actually did think i am going to try and do what they're saying or did you always manage to actually stick to your guns and be like no this is me this is this is how i sound this is how i speak i'm going to stick with it i've never changed yeah, no, yeah. If, if if you're going to try and make me be somebody that i'm not i'm not going to do it you know yeah, i'm simply yeah. not going to do it and i've just stuck to my guns and uh, yeah, yeah we'll learn that lesson yeah. you know just don't try to get people to change you you know people tune into you because of they it's a reflection of themselves and uh, that's what i've discovered very quickly and uh, yes, even today, you know, I'll get um, trolls on social media again. You can't, you're illiterate, you can't spell, you can't. Oh, and I go, yeah, fair enough, but I've, look at me. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. right. Yeah. I'm doing okay, aren't I? You know, um, sorry, I have no mortgage. Yeah. So, go, <laughs> yeah. you know, go figure. Yeah, it's the best comeback. You yeah, can it is. Do yeah. The interest that. rates. Don't affect me. <laughs> Don't affect me. No, they're really good because when they're high, that means my savings, I'll make a fortune of money. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, and that's not me being <laughs> smug and facetious. That's me saying, you know, over the years, I've just listened to myself yeah. rather than to other people. You know, the guidance, the best guidance I can give anyone is if it feels right, it's right. Mm, yeah. If it feels wrong, it's wrong. Walk away. Yeah. And uh, my dad sat me on the staircase um, I always remember this moment, 16 years of age, I could have gone, you know, one way and in one direction and being a, a little thug or a little thief or whatever, or I could have gone another way and be Mike Brewer, the guy you see today. And uh, there was a, a point in my life where I was a bit of a rebel, you know, 16 years of age, I'm cocky, you know, I'd swear at me mum and dad when they say you can't go out tonight. I go, you just you, got your mouth you know, head, yeah. <laughs> and you're testing your parents, see how far you can go. And I just remember my dad, Roger, he sat me down on the staircase in, in our house in Sutton. And he said, look, son, he said, you're a really bright kid. Mm. And he said, uh, you could do one or two ways. Your life can go one or two ways from this moment here. He said, the best thing I can tell you is always do the right thing right and never do the wrong thing wrong. And he said, just remember those words and hopefully you'll get through life okay. And, you know, every single decision I've ever made is is that is always do the right things, but do them right, you know, do yeah. it well and uh, never do the wrong thing. Yeah, we've always said if, if we say yes to we're doing a job or, or whatever the opportunity is, like as soon as we say yes, we give it everything, whether we're being paid, not being paid, it's just the way we've been brought up with. And and then if, if it's a no for whatever reason, then, then it's quite clear what it is. And it, I would never want to do a job or say yes to an event or something like, I said yes to go into an event the other day and I was at a Ferrari event then. They said, do you want to go and drive on the track? And it, they just won Le Mans and all that. And I said, yes. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I've said yeah. yes to someone else. And then I was, I was on Instagram, I was like, oh, I was felt like I'm missing Oh my everything. God, we always do say yes to everything. And that was the one and time I, I you said no. Yeah. I had to say no to, I had to say no to the head of Ferrari because I said yes to somebody else. And I was like, because I've I've always had them values being like, if I've said yes to somebody, whoever big or small, I'm sorry, I've I've got to stay with Well, that's it. the mark of your success. You know, you two are so No, I would successful. have said, see you later. I'll go. <laughs> I'm off on the track. Uh, but you yeah. can't, sometimes you can't split yourself in two. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's only one of you. But that is the mark of your success. You know, knowing uh, that you're just you and yeah. trusting your gut and trusting your instincts and doing the right thing. You know, turning down the boss of Ferrari, trust me, is pretty cool. Yeah. And that's <laughs> going to get you more Ferrari invites. Me, that's for yes, sure. you're going to get more Ferrari invites 
invites off the back of that that you ever wish. Talking uh, so, about yeah, that was pretty cool. Talking about success though, you um you you are a very successful man, not just in business but in competing as well. I've got to say, you do hold a world record, don't you? Uh, yeah, well? no. There's a few things about me that people don't know. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, for you know at some point in my past career, uh, dare I say, full rally license, full uh, race license. Uh, I've competed in a touring car production S1. I've driven Formula One cars. Can I just uh, ask, on, you, how is a Formula One car to drive? It's I one know, of the one well, cars. I, drove, I, di- I, I did really 24 laps wheel, in Michael Schumacher's race. Oh, oh. I like my knees. I've got a bit, I've got a bit absolutely. Cool. I've done the single there was seat a, racing there was a really, no, I can, there's a, This was on TV. It was for Driven, uh, yeah. which was years ago on Channel 4. And uh, and I can remember at the Magna Core circuit. It's so smiling, there I am on I the, see the Yeah, see the smile on my face. Here I am on the Magna Core circuit uh, in France in Michael Schumacher's race winning Bennington car. Yeah. Uh, with no trash control, no aids. This is, you know, just at the time when Was they it just, just raw. Raw. I mean, this oh. is Cosworth engine, yeah. absolute balls out. Yeah. <laughs> your, your, your nuts are against the wall. And I was terrified all morning by uh, um, Stefan, who took me around the circuit in a Fiat Multipla. And he said, okay, when you come to this corner, you go to this corner, no, no throttle, no throttle. And then uh, you apply throttle here. If you don't apply throttle here, into the wall, you lose your legs. Okay, next corner. <laughs> you come into next corner. You go break, break. You go nice, gentle on the throttle. If you give too much throttle, you go into wall, you lose your legs. And so I was, when I got in the car, I was terrified. <laughs> of losing your legs. <laughs> of losing my legs. But after a couple of laps... And understanding the grip and the mechanic, mm. uh, the aerodynamic grip and mechanical grip you get from one of those cars, uh, I was coming down the, um, uh, the the straight, and it's called the Golf King. It goes to the Adelaide hairpin, and I was coming down. They put some cones out for me, some braking cones, okay, yeah, out for me, and I was remembered after a whole lap of holding my breath. I remembered I had a bloody camera to talk. And I hadn't oh, said a dear. word. I'd been concentrating so hard. <laughs> oh, I can imagine like, that, though. I would have been the same. Like, I'd have been just straight. Guys, well, in fact, they yeah, played yeah. back Voice the videos, and I didn't take a breath for 57 <laughs> seconds. I sort of held my breath as I left the pits. And then 50 seconds, seconds later, I went, <sighs> and it was my first breath. And then I realized it wasn't until I come back past the start finish straight, there was a camera crew there. And I went, oh, God, say something. I'm in this car. I haven't said a bloody word. And I started to scream behind the stereo as I'm snatching third, fourth, oh. fifth, sixth, seventh, and I'm looking down at a digital dash on the speedboat, 198, 199, 200, 201. And the cones went ping, behind me, the two cones. Now, with carbon fiber braking, you have to do what they call degressive braking. So basically, it's left foot braking. Yep. So it's a stab on the brakes, a hard stab, off and back Release, on again. Yeah. So basically, what you're trying to do is build up an immense amount of heat in the, in the brake yeah. uh, disc, on the carbon disc, come off and then play then slow, and then slow yeah. it down. So I went bang, bang on the, uh, on the uh, brake pedal as hard as I possibly could. And I shot forward in the cockpit, <laughs> into the cockpit. And then when I looked up, I was 30 meters away from the corner and there was a French sort of mechanic or one of the <laughs> teams standing on the corner giving me a, the hands, giving me a, you know, the sign. A gesture. Yeah. A gesture. Saying that giving, wasn't very well done. Yeah, yeah, saying, look at you, you twat. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I shifted down into first gear and drove to the corner <laughs> and then round it. And it was then I realized that the brake, it was, and it was the brakes. And all yeah. I kept saying then for the next 24 laps, uh, because we played it was back. It that it's strong on your neck. It's just brakes. Yeah. I just kept saying, because acceleration is something we feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a Ferrari, you feel acceleration. Yeah. But it was the brakes. Every time you come to a corner and you went, I just went, oh my God, the brakes, the brakes. Oh my God, the brakes. That's why the liquid from Formula One driver's eyes hits the inside of their but visor. That's well, crazy. Because, isn't it? In the past three or four races, George Russell's been like, okay, so it's, it's raining. And everyone's like, it's, it's not raining. It's like, Sweat and yeah, and, and eyeball eye. fluid is hitting <laughs> the inside of, just, yeah. <laughs> inside of the visor. It was insane doing that in that car was insane. And I've driven world rally cars, that, yeah. every Ferrari, every Lamborghini, every McLaren. I've driven everything basically. I think that's what makes a car so different is the braking. Like acceleration it's is one thing, but when 
I can't even, and the G's I can't even you can imagine corner, an F1 the G's car. You well, can yeah, there's a, there's a complex sucks. at the back of the Magna Core circuit called the Hockenheim uh, complex where it's a it's a right, left, right. Yeah. And uh, if you lean on that, when I was going through it originally, I was going through in third gear. And then when I pulled back into the pits, they'd done a, a, a quick check of the car. This guy lent in, was Gawa hanging out of his mouth, <laughs> flat cap on, and he said, and he could hear where I was on the circuit. Yeah, yeah. And he said, I can hear you're in third going through Hockenheim. And I said, yeah, I am. He said, go forth and lean on it. Lean on the car. Ah, okay, yeah. And I said, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't fancy that very that's much. And you've got to have trust in them things as well, isn't it? It really is. So a couple of laps later, I started to build up that confidence. And I went through in fourth. And I leant upon the tires third uh, in fourth gear uh, through this complex. And it was the equivalent. They measured it when I got back. It was the equivalent of a baby elephant leaning on me in both directions. Wow. And that was the G-forces. So it was a one and a half ton of G yeah. against me going left, right, left. That's It's mental. insane. It was, I got out of the car. I, I was exhausted. When they had to lift me out the car. I was thinner and fitter back then. But they had to lift me out the car. And they took me to a changing room. Yeah. I had a shower uh, and then did an interview after. And as soon as I got in the car, going back to the hotel, I was asleep within yeah. two seconds. Well, Nick DeVries, when he got the opportunity Couldn't last year, that, that, arms, that first he? race yeah. he got into it, and he literally said to Pickford, I need you to get me out of the car. car. Couldn't can't move get out. neck, yeah. arms, nothing. I'd say the adrenaline and everything. And he, just he's an experienced so race yeah. and everything, but and nothing I, prepares you for that F1. I spent a lot of time... Uh, training to get in that car. So Perry McCarthy, who was the original Stig, is a uh, friend of mine. Uh, Perry uh, set me up at home with a, a weight, uh, which was a, a 15 kilogram weight on a stick yep. and a piece of string around it. And, and you're turning, your turning it up yeah. and turning it down just to build up Perry in my w wrist. Uh, we had a big elastic uh, band that was around the top of my Pulling. head onto a door and I would just pull it against the door. And I spent a lot of time getting in training for that, but that was a, an experience. That's and then crazy. I broke a world record. Yes, you did, yeah. <laughs> an average speed world record. Yeah, so it was a weird one this. because it was set by You didn't just break it, you smashed, smashed it. Yeah, it's never been record. beaten since, yeah. Like it's phenomenal. So, I own a couple of lap records as well. Into perspective. In a, so in a Volvo S60 T5, yeah. was it? Yeah. So you were driving yeah. for 24 hours. 24 hours. At yeah. what? what a speed to, to get an average of so i think the uh, the record before you was 113 uh, well, 130 well, miles an hour was, set by alpha Romeo. yeah yeah something. but you must have been good in it way faster than what you did yeah do, so to you have to get, to, to get above 113 because you've got to take in of those 24 hours you're going to stop every sort of Hour, so you got to minutes. Is what I was thinking. Changing did, wheel bearings, changing outside Did you do low, less pit stops? Did you do less things to try and average that speed up higher still? Obviously, no. you've got to go that speed. Well, but. we never we never once scrubbed the inside tires. It was always outside tires. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was all, and it was uh, fuel. Obviously, yeah. you'd have to yeah, stop yeah. for fuel. Outside tires, and we would always knock out those two outside wheel bearings after on every third pit stop. Yeah, we'd have to quickly change the wheel bearings. Uh, the only thing that we did differently than Alpha, I suppose, is we had the car in air jacks. Yeah. So it was a Volvo S60 touring car. So I would, you know, whip it around the circuit on this 155 miles an hour <laughs> uh, for <laughs> two hours. Then I'd get a call off the radio and I would pull in, press a button, and go, and it immediately yep. yeah, yeah. pop in Shoot the air, air jack. It was at Millbrook testing Millbrook, ground, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Just, ground. just over yeah. two miles concentric yeah. circle. On, on the bowl. On yeah. the bowl. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I've got a high speed race license still today as one of the only people allowed to go over the 100 mile an hour uh, uh, st uh, yeah. neutral sp uh, speed limit. Yeah. Uh, we, yes, <laughs> I'm AJ. sure you have yes. as well. Everyone has. <laughs> yeah. I used to get in with me and Jason Plato. Oh, very. Uh, we had legend. a Marshall follow us back off it, put it like that. Uh, well, <laughs> of yes. AJ. well, me and Jason Plato, uh, we used to really dick around on that uh, uh, bowl a lot. <laughs> it's I mean, it's a lot. an epic bowl. On a weekly basis. Have you taken would... your hands off the wheel oh, on get, the top? Get, forget that nonsense. No, me and Jason, there's, uh, there's a couple of stories, uh, but it was me and Jason uh, hit cruise control at 75 miles an hour in the middle neutral steer speed. 
And uh, Jason gets in the back and starts reading the newspaper. <laughs> um, so he's sitting in the back of the car with it, just driving around on its own on cruise control. And I go past him and I go, oh, you idiot. So <laughs> I go into the 100 mile an hour lane. I hit cruise control and get in the passenger seat. And then Jason comes up on the inside like to laugh sitcom. at me. And me and him are just, we've, we've done so many things in that circuit. <laughs> That's honestly. insane. Okay, I've got to, I want to bring it back to, okay, so Wheeler Dealers. Within the show itself and the creativity of it, like, do you, obviously you have an input, you have like, we would want to do this car. And on the business side of that, do you have, is it yours? Is it? Uh, yeah, I mean, who, the, who the, owns it's, it? Uh, I'm a producer of yep. Wheeler Dealers, so I produce it as well as present it. Uh, oh, so yeah, you my, are really connected to that. that yeah, no, it's my baby. baby. Yeah, yeah, no, no yeah. It, it, I, it comes from my heart. Yeah. Uh, as what I think we it's should be It's an out-of-body experience of your brain. And it's just it, well, yeah, TV. I mean, look, I have an amazing team of people work with me. Really, really good people work with me. Um, but these are people that I've had to find over the last 20 years mm. uh, to bring in that understand what I want and yeah. what I think the show should be. And uh, no matter who the mechanic is, uh, the, the, the team have always listened to me. I'm the dad of the show. Yep. And they've always listened to me and I've always taken my advice. And, um, I, you know, I talk to the audience, my audience on a daily basis. I meet them in petrol stations out on the road uh, when I'm at a car auction, when they're, you know, I'm at a car show. I talk to the audience and they tell me what they want and what they want to see. Uh, and I've got a big social media following and they listen. To, I, I talk to them on that as well. So I understand what the audience need, what they desire and what they want. And I pass that over to the team. And me and the team uh, spend an awful long time sitting down and trying to craft shows that we know people will engage with. And uh, yeah, so the whole thing really, I would say, comes from my, my gut, from me, uh, from my heart. And uh, I'm just fortunate enough to work with people that understand exactly what I want. And they try to turn it into, into pictures and into sound. And uh, I work with this really creative bunch of people that I'm blessed with. They've stayed with me forever as well. You know, I've got the same cameraman and sound man. Yeah, that's I've had for 20 years. 20 you, you years. It says a lot about out, yourself yeah. as well. You're, the way 20 you years, they've yeah. never left. And the team that I've got now, the production team, they're going to work with me for the next 20 years, you know, if I'm still doing it. Uh, because nobody wants to leave. You know, they all want to work uh, with us and on the team. It, it's not like a, a regular job, you know, working on Wheeler Dealers. Sometimes we're working 17 hour days, 16 yep. hour days. We work six days a week. It's really hard. It's yeah. a, a very tough job. But there's never one moment within an hour of any given day that we're not laughing to the point of tears. We are, it's just like blokes and lads having a giggle and coming up with something that's so fun and yeah. creative. It comes out on screen. You know, that's what we we absolutely love about it. It's such me, a healthy me, work environment. It is very actually, healthy, yeah. you know, yeah. really healthy. I have it literally written on the wall, you know, if we don't if today we don't leave in tears, let's not do it. Let's yeah, give up. Yeah. You know, because it, that's the whole point of the fun we want to inject in the pro program and get it across. But do it in an entertaining, lighthearted way. Don't make it too complicated. I need it so my mum can understand it. You know, my mum broke down on the yeah. side of the road. She go, oh, my boy showed me how to do this. I could do this. <laughs> uh, and that's what I need the show to be. Yeah. Uh, and I, I gather that's the secret of its success and why it's got over 200 million people that watch it, watch it in 217 territories around the world and why they've just ordered another big global series off me and uh, why I'm being poached by, you know, other networks all over mm. the world are trying to uh, work with me all the time. So, um, yeah. So you have literally your entire career, everything you have just created through something you love doing. Uh, yeah, and I think that's the secret yeah. of success. Look at you two. You know, you love dancing and you loved what you did. And it's brought you this amazing success with your careers. And, you, you know, that that's what I've done with cars. I only know yeah. cars, really. I, I know how to buy, fix, restore, sell uh, cars. And it's brought me amazing success. And still today, you know, I, there's a, a video gone up uh, just recently on my social media channels, a personal video. If you see me, I can buy a, a Porsche 964 Turbo. Uh, and I went and bought it last week. Watch that video. Yours, that's me. That's Mike Brewer buying a car for yep. myself. And look at the excitement in me that I've gone and got this car. Uh, and that that's who I am. You know, I'm nearly 60. 
And, and at nearly 60, I'm, I'm as excited as I was when I was 17 and bought yeah. that first Mini. But it's like, like the car shows. When, when you go to a car show, everyone has that same, it doesn't matter what background they're from. <laughs> yeah. they, they, they see a car that maybe they, they can own or they would love to own or they, they just want to admire. Like ev that excitement, that it unifies yeah. everyone. And that's one thing that the audience that I feel like you've captivated <laughs> has that same passion and just loves it so much. Yeah, if your passion comes from on screen, people are gonna buy into it. You know, you, you dancing, me with my cars, Clarkson with his farm, you know, yeah, yeah, James, so you, you know, Richard Hammond and his little workshop. Yeah. You know, if your passion comes through, uh, people will come along with you for the and ride. And I think if you're teaching a skill as well, people, yeah, skill it sets really, are, yeah, yeah, really yeah. does help. And people you, love to learn. They love yeah, to yeah. learn. And you know, my skill set is, is varied and wide, you know, I'm a, uh, people don't know, but I'm a fully qualified mechanic. You know, I can. Mm. People go, oh, you lazy sod, you never get your hands dirty. <laughs> I don't need to, you know. That's the point of being a businessman. You have other people do that for yeah. you. Uh, so that's what the mechanic's role is in the in the show. Um, but no, I'm a businessman. I'm a, a philanthropist. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, there's a lot of different skill sets to me. You know, yeah, so, I can... so you kind of hit, you slightly mentioned it then. Like, you, you know your passion, you know what you're really good at, but the other things, how how do you find going about, A, you've obviously got a great team around you, so you don't have to worry about hiring so many yeah. new people, but then things that maybe, like, you've got your dealerships, you've, you've got this place, how did you go about taking that maybe next step into business owner, entrepreneur, where some people don't take that step. They always yeah, stay within that comfort your, zone. Your yeah. first business uh, well, first thing. and foremost, it's all about, you know, uh, and you're going to learn this as you, as you progress. It's all about time. You yeah. know, the number one commodity that we don't seem to have enough of is time. And it becomes your most valuable and precious resource is time. Uh, that's why if, we're doing it early, Kurt. Kurt, yeah. Kurt, Kurt that's, was that's, like, why are we doing so early? So I can fit more into the day, so yeah, I can get things correct. done. Well, that's a really good work ethic. Yeah. That's a great yeah. work ethic. Um, and so time becomes a really important commodity. And if you can work out what you need in terms of your, your time in a day and what you can achieve in that day, well, try and achieve a little bit more. And that's what I always say. So if you know what, you, what you're setting out to do, push it and go for a little bit more. And so for me, it's it was quite easy for me not only to sit, write, produce uh, wheeler dealers and present it and mm. go out and buy the cars and sell the cars and, you know, travel around the world making this show. Um, but it's also easy then for me in those moments that I've got where I should be, you know, cutting the lawn or going to the hairdressers. Yeah. And get, I can go, no, actually, I can squeeze in the business meeting there. Yeah. Yeah. I can do this there. I can go and lend myself to that charity over there. And it just becomes all about time management. And um, anyone who knows me, anyone who knows me personally, knows that I never sit down. I never sit still. No, uh, you are, may, you're always I'm always on the moving. go. I may look like a, a fat, odious uh, <laughs> oaf. Uh, but I, I work hard, you know, I've got, a, I come from a working class family. We've got an amazing work ethic and uh, I feel that there's enough time to sit down when you want to retire. I'm not quite there yet. So I'll just keep working. I don't think you'll ever retire. So yeah. not, you're not going to be. Yeah, like, I'm sort of. Retirement you know, with a passion that becomes a hobby. Correct. Still yeah, being that, I was yeah. going to say. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'd, I'd like to spend a little bit more time exploring my passions for yeah. myself rather than for other people. More yeah. car football? Will that, more will car that be? football yeah. would be great. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes I'm uh, quite good at that. <laughs> yeah, you are very good <laughs> at that. I'm good at that. I, I played like um, car football I won. with Mike. I think you're fine. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Again, we did very well. I played some car football with Mike uh, not long ago and I learned a lot from you. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, if, just... Smash the cars. <laughs> Park Root, in front Root of the balls. goal. <laughs> the ball Park in front fit of the in. goal. He had a car with no reverse. So I kept saying to him, no you, reverse. Yeah. And I <laughs> said to him, stitched he up. said, he I said, broke one Mike, car. I've got no reverse. He said, just keep going forward. But every time you see him go for the goal, just drive as fast as you can into the goal mouth. <laughs> you just see me flying around to the <laughs> pole in the goal. It yeah. Why is that car going in circles? Can't yeah, go we backwards. had so much fun. <laughs> uh, no, look, the bottom line, see, the question is, um, you know, just try and manage your time and when you give up your time, give it up in the best yeah. way you possibly mm. can. You know, as you said earlier, you know, uh, you always turn up. You're passionate about what you're doing. Uh, anyone who knows me, I'm always polite, on time. I'm never angry. Uh, if something's not going right, rather than scream and shout at somebody, let's find out what's going wrong. Yeah. Let's yeah. try and repair Let's it. try and help people. Like, just well, how can people. we make it better? How can it, we improve? That's all it is. Just try and improve things. And you'll come away on the end of the day realizing that you've achieved a lot more than you thought you would. Your success rating has just gone up a notch. 
And uh, the people around you go away with a lovely, warm, fuzzy feeling, saying, what a nice person, I want to work with him again. And, think, and in terms of investment as well, you <clears> sort of, would you say a key massive thing is invest in yourself? And we say that's what you've done a lot Yeah, with. so d listen, again, it's listen to yourself and listen yeah. to, if you're, you know, investments are, in terms of entrepreneurial investments, um, for me, you're looking at my investments. Yeah. They're around me, you know, these vans and these cars that I invest in. Uh, I know that, that it comes from my heart. You know, I know what I'm looking at. I know what yeah. it's worth. I know what other people have paid for it and how I can be passionate about selling that to somebody. Um, so, yeah, you have to listen to your gut and what your gut's telling you. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of opportunities out there at the moment for good entrepreneurial investments. Mm. You know, this country may seem like it's, it's down, going down the dogs, uh, but trust me, I've been around the world a few times, and this is one of the, the if not the best For place me, on the planet to live. Yeah, yeah. and uh, investment opportunities, and as long as your eyes are open and you're open to learning, and, and I find using the people around you, like most people don't talk to their people about what they're doing, where they're going. Like even actually when we walked in the table here at One Automotive, like your business partner, like, Speaking to him, his excitement that when, how he got in touch with you, how he was going to like sell you a van. And then like, this was the opportunity. Like, it's so warming to walk into a business where quite clearly he's happy to come to work. He enjoys what he's doing. Yeah. And one thing that I find really sad is when people kind of get stuck in a rut and they're like, well, actually, I don't enjoy this. Or I'm not saying this is the, the be all and end all, but they're, they're not even open their eyes to being like, the opportunity is there. And I think it comes down to what you said work hard people don't always want to work hard which I, I is think, slightly sad for me and I, and I think um people need to go into situations with maybe more of an investment mindset an open mindset on seeing there are links and there are things that can be done with different businesses and you don't have together. to be on about money but this time, comes down like, to schools as well it comes down to yeah. school for me as well look people aren't getting taught how to think in a business mindset, how to think in an open yeah, and future look, mindset. Look, look the, you, having got a daughter who's been through the education system, I feel that the education system, you're going to be right on my side here, is the most archaic mm, thing yeah. on the planet. It's yes. ridiculous. That, yeah. uh, school is basically a memory test. You know, you're asked nine months, yes. nine months later yes. after you sat in this classroom and your teacher told you how to carve up a pie chart, nine months later, you're sitting in an exam room Room, and somehow you've been told to remember yeah. what you learned nine months ago. In life, yeah. it gives you a test and then you learn from it. In right. school, you have to learn and then it's take a, memory a test. test. It's, right. yeah, so some it's... people at school, are, I had friends at school, and I'm pretty sure you did, who were clowns, lazy, useless. But as soon as they got into the exam environment, they passed. Oh, and the reason memory. was because they had really good memories. Yeah. And there's other people that were swatted, put their heads down, really concentrated, got into exam situation and failed. Yeah. Yeah. And that's because they've not got a good memory. So school is all about being, a, it's a memory test. That's all it is. Uh, and I think that's archaic. I think that's terrible. That yeah. We should be, kids should be judged at the end of every lesson. At the end, yeah. of the, they should be marked. And, it's and that, the that, mindset that... Yeah there can only be one correct answer is scary for yeah, it's me. Terrible. Because in, it's, in our world, there's no, there's correct, no, answer. There's no correct answer. There's no correct answer. There's no wrong answer. And history is only history by the person who wrote it down the first time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, history is getting rewritten constantly because we're learning new things every day about our past and where we come from. And science, yeah, it's yeah. still, you go to school, you're going to learn that Christopher Columbus discovered America. Well, he oh. didn't. The Romans were there years <laughs> before. You know, just re... Battle Hastings, 1066, yeah, exactly. like the one date you re remember. Rewrite, you know, it needs to be rewritten. Anyway, that that's that one side of it. Uh, the other side of it is that the... Um, the education system in this country doesn't give enough for real education. What we spoke about the mm. other day, the last year at school should be about getting a mobile phone contract. Yeah. It should be about be about applying for a job, getting a mortgage. It should be about writing a finance agreement, yep. trying to learn how to sell how a, to get your national insurance to get a number, number to set up work, how, how, how to, to you know that. book a doctor's appointment. Yeah. That should be your last year at school. It should be that. It shouldn't be this you know memory test. You yeah, should be yeah. being told this is what the real world has got set up for you. Yep. Now, now you, we're going to learn you. You've now learned how to spell, how to write, how to count. Now we're going to teach you how you exist in the real world. Absolutely, yeah. I think problem solving is the one thing that like, feels like a lost art. Common sense is one thing, but I'm not even going to get onto that subject. But <laughs> problem solving itself, like, oh, find what you've got. Literally yeah. the whole world in your hand now in a mobile phone, like, if you can't find it this way, just think of another way to get it. Like that sort of mentality is yeah, like, you come in here, you've got a problem. You're like, okay, 
how are we going to solve it? Or there's something wrong with the business. How are we going to solve it? It's not like, oh, it's a problem. I'm just going to go home now. Because you, you can't do that in real life. No, you can't. And schools are lending themselves too much to uh, pampering to different, yes. you know, woke cultures and yes. wake cultures or whatever they are. And uh, everyone's too frightened to step on anybody else's eggshells and say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. Uh, I've been blessed that I get asked to go, and I have been in the past, asked to go to schools and give speeches at schools and encourage, um, you know, uh, fifth-year students or sixth-form students. And I've done that, and I've turned up and sat in classrooms, and I've given up my time for free to go and do these things. And uh, you'll end up with a kid who sit, walks in, has got headphones on. The teacher, I'll say to the teacher, look, I'm just about to, you're going to tell him to take his headphones off. And the teacher say, no, I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed it's... to tell him to take his headphones off because it might you know, insult him in some way. It's and so that, bad, that. It's terrible. A, a it's terrible. What's did, happened? Yeah. There, what there has needs happened? There to be some discipline still there. there. Yeah, there is no discipline <laughs> at school. Yeah, there was one kid that I was halfway through giving a speech and a kid uh, kicked the door open, walked in, uh, sat on the edge of a table, started chatting to his mate, and the teacher went, um, you know, whatever his name was, Graham, you're not even in this class. He wasn't even in that class. <laughs> so he said, get out. And he went, no, I'm talking to my buddy. Oh, and he wanted yes. to talk to his mate, and he just walked in during my speech and started to talk to his friend. I mean, uh, oh. yeah, very. I'd very... be scared of my mum and dad if I did that. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So, uh, yeah, school, school needs to have a, a complete rethink, yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, and the education system globally, I think, yeah. needs but a, a it's rethink. It's that last year opening people's minds up and making them making them realize what they're getting into, what life is about to bring at them. I feel that needs really tweaking. Yeah, we've thing, employed in people way. on. You know, people have gone to university or gone to college and come to work with some wheeler dealers and yep. they do their first morning on wheeler dealers they're very excited they want to you know what uh, the tv world and the media world is like you start off at the bottom yes. and you work your way up i've worked with production assistants who are now producers oh 100 yeah. yeah. like you, your runner that moves on to they actually ends up being the exact producer of a show it, it doesn't take long before no, you realise No, it doesn't take that. long. And, and the one thing that we came in, like, even when I did Strictly, like, being 20 years old, like, I was the age of the runners. So like, the amount of respect, I was like, no, honestly, you don't need to get me a cup of tea. Like, I'm fine, I'll do yeah, my You got thing. told, no, we have to. No, yeah, I, was, I was literally down. told by the runners, they were like, no, we yeah. have to, because, like, if, if you, you don't ask for a cup of tea, I'd lose my job sort of thing. I was like, okay, just make sure there's a cup of tea left there at the end of <laughs> yeah. each hour. Well, I, uh, I had one in a, that come to work with us, uh, first morning she was there. It was at some point during the course of the morning. Uh, I was I'd just finished filming something. I'm now being called into uh, a huddle, production huddle, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, where I'm going to do something else. I haven't had a drink for the last three hours. Uh, and I just turned to her and I said, Look, is there any chance you could just ask anyone if they want a round of drinks? And she said, as loud as you like, I didn't go to college to learn how to make you a cup of tea. And I said, well, that's exactly what you went to college for. And that's why you got this job. So she lasted one morning. You know, yeah. that girl lasted one morning. And uh, and I thought, God, what kind of education yeah. have we given this girl? You know, what's her, what's in her brain? What's her, what's making people, her think like that? Yeah. You but know, even if like, if I had- it's the uh, opportunity, people don't realize. Yeah, it's no, like even just being crazy. Like, yeah. I started off on a broom. You know, I, I, I left school. Well, I left school when I was 15. Yeah. Because I was the, I'm born in August, August 28th. Uh, so I'm that, that weird age, you know, sort of yeah, you're crossover on your, year, your yeah. crossover year. So I'm on my summer holidays when I left school. Uh, so I was 15 years of age. And when I left, I went and worked at uh, Senol Printing. It was printing record sleeves. I actually printed Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd. So if you're <laughs> holding that, I printed it. Uh, there's another thing about me people don't know. Um, and I started off on a broom, you know. I started yeah. off in that factory sweeping up people's cigarette butts and into a dustpan and brush and... And then I ended up loading the machine. And then I ended up le learning how to twist the dials on the machine and throwing in the, the mm. inks, the, you know, the magenta, yeah, the yeah. cyan, the black into the machine. Then I, you know, used to sit with a bloke called George who would puffy cigar smoke into my face. Uh, and I would say, so how do I make that do that? And what does that do if I twist yeah. that? And uh, within a month, he went, well, I don't need to do this anymore because this kid's going to do it. So he sat in a chair reading the Sun newspaper, looking at Sam Fox on page three whilst I got on the machine and worked this four color printer and I ended up printing record sleeves he lost his job I kept his yeah, job yeah you know uh, because they could see I had a good work ethic and that was basically my you know my 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 way into work 
And I fought from that very early age, you know. Um, my, my God, you know, only a month ago, I had a broom in my hand. Yeah. Now I'm working a four-color so printer. you just said, though, you said that work ethic, because that is one thing that we've always been told. We always got told from our oh, parents. work hard. Well, if you're going to do something, do it. And I've noticed work. every job I've ever done, we had our first jobs at about eight, nine years old, working at a mountain board in Oh, we've always worked the whole we, we did it so we could ride there for free. So then yeah, we used, that to, was we used to kick off. people up. We'd used to undo the boards and the bolts and everything on there and do it, getting a spanner, getting this and that. And it was, we just worked super hard and they could see that. And that's what we were always appreciating. Yeah, dog walking well, that, that we'd always yeah, do. Yeah, in the see kitchens. It, it would just be nonstop. Well, I can see it today. Look, we're, it's a Monday morning. We did, you know, this is going to play out another time. Yeah. This yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a rainy, horrible, <laughs> damp, nasty <laughs> really <is>. Monday morning. <laughs> and at eight o'clock in the morning, you're outside my business, you know, and you're miles away from where you live to come and record this podcast. And I'm like, Wow, these two yeah. guys, you are really going for it's it. It's respect for us. Like, you, you, you you're at the given height of your time. career, you've given everything. So, yeah. if somebody gives us the, their time, we, we're going to give absolutely everything to make it the best, the best record, the equipment, the everything, because for us, it, it's it's so valuable. And for us, even just learning, like talking to you, like my brain sparks. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, you've got this, or even like your electric scooters here and there. And, but like seeing, like, if something comes up, you, I can, can be like, okay, I'd want to work with you, or we'd want to go into business that's sort of meant that's how my brain is just, always firing one listening to the advice and stuff you've given and, and the way you so talk valuable. about things and the way you talk in such a grounded and straightforward simple manner which people overcomplicate these days you would just if you're like you said if your gut's feeling it it's probably correct yes if it's not there's probably something wrong yep and that's and so simple true. as and that the and tv side I it's it's crazy to think like when you think over 200 million viewers like worldwide, over 200 territories and still going so strong in a day and age where people are like, oh, I, I need a special effects system. No, no, we get a good guys, solve a problem, have fun and make sure you make other people happy. It's, it's, yeah, it's guaranteed. It's, you know, I always say on Wheeler Dealers and uh, or, or any show that I make, it's not about me and it's not about Elvis or Ed or Ant. It's not about us. It's about the car. The car is the star. Yes. Right? So let's just make that the star. We're just the vehicles, if you pardon the pun, uh, to make the star shine on screen. And uh, that's that. I think that's part of that. Uh, success as well is because we're, I'm I'm not trying to be, you know, in your face. I'm not trying yeah, to, yeah. you know, be controversial, mm. scream at the mechanic or scream at the cameraman yeah. or throw things down. I'm not trying to be that. It's just <laughs> so if you I, have seen him do that, you know it really went <laughs> wrong. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. It really is. What I'm trying to say to you here is it really is my passion. You know, this is the, the oh, build I, itself. Yeah. The build it's, itself it's, is yeah. the passion. And uh, really, ironically, and again, the people that know me, if I'm not making TV, guess what I'm doing? Still I'm working, I'm yeah. working on my bloody cars. Yeah. You know, I'm down in the garage pulling my car apart and putting it back together or trying to fix a problem or trying to come up with a, a new creative solution. Or these days, because I have got, you know, my life is a bit more comfortable, I lend myself to business advice and to entrepreneurial yep. advice for people. Uh, I do a lot of work for the charities that I'm involved in. And uh, these days I, I can do that. I can just time you know i can give up my time and time as i say is a precious commodity but actually yes, it's yeah. free yeah. time is free isn't it so if you can give it up to to better to further somebody else's life and uh you should do it you know i absolutely believe you should do it i think one but thing it comes back to you, you yeah know, the goodness yeah. Comes you, back you, to you give yeah. it comes back. you have such a good feeling deep down one thing that you can't really control is all the people like I work with my brother Curtis here, like within the show, like obviously you've got all of your production team that we personally don't see from the side of the camera, but obviously your your relationship with the mechanic, like having Ed and, and Ant and Elvis now, like how does it kind of find for you, like you put a lot of time and effort into them relationships and sometimes they don't work out, sometimes they do. Like you, you've been really lucky in finding good people, like, but sometimes... Cogs change, you have to move people in now. How, how's that for you as you're still like... Yeah, I'd, there, I'd like to through. think that Ed, uh, who, who most people will refer to, uh, would equally say that it was probably one of the best periods of his life, yep. was working with me. 
um, because it was certainly one of the best periods of my life is working with Ed. You know, the guy's a genius. He's amazing. He's a fantastic mechanic, an amazing human being. Um, but he wanted something else. It's as yeah, simple yeah. as that. You know, I can't stop the guy going off yeah. to do what he wants to do. But it doesn't mean to say that I have to stop doing what I want Absolutely to do. Absolutely not. You know, no. I, I, nobody said that. That's People's not written down. Can change, you know, yeah. I could have quite easily have given up when Ed wanted to give up and where would I be now to be, you know, back to buying and selling cars, which is great. I yeah. would be doing that, but I'd be doing it brilliantly. But no, uh, I'm very lucky because Ed was incredible to work with. Ant is just quite possibly the, one of the most driven people on the planet. He's just insanely driven that he wants, if he wants something or wants to create something, it's going to happen. I mean, a guy just won Pikes Peak in a Radford Type 62-2 uh, car that was on paper three months ago. He showed me a rendering of it three, three months, months ago. Three months ago on paper. Three Whoa. months ago, he showed me a rendering and of the car. And they pulled that out the bag. And I went now. to him, you're not going to build that in three months. Wow. And he said, we're going to have a go. Three months later, <laughs> we'll have a go, yeah. not only did they build the car, they bloody won it. They won that's, Pike's that's, Peak that's, in that's the actually, car. That's impressive. That must it's be more than impressive. Itself. You've got companies like you that's, ready. Yeah. Porsche have yeah. been trying to Spending win it for, yes, yeah, they've been trying to, correct. And he went up in a, in a car that they built in a garage in California. I went and put uh, me, Jensen Button, and Tanner Faust. I went over and put the bonnet on the car, the lights on the car. I jumped in on the build as well when I was over there last, That's uh, last that, month. I'm, my brain is comprehending. Like when you break down three months, three months, 12 weeks. That's... From paper to winning. That's, from paper that's to amazing. winning. It's incredible. And that's a driven character. So mm. to work with Ant was incredible i mean that guy is just insane at what he wants to achieve in life plus work. you know That's... he's dating Renny Zellweger, so he's not doing yeah. too bad you know <laughs> uh, so ant's doing all right and then i i i meet elvis and uh, elvis comes into my life and this is a guy that's not like ed how did and, you how did that connection happen because he's well, so high up in his profession and how he got lewis hamilton up there. yeah exactly elvis took lewis hamilton to his first world championship when kimmy Räikkönen and mick yeah. and you know the guy is in the automotive formula one world he's a legend right he's an absolute legend uh, elvis obviously after 10 years of being with mclaren and traveling around the world he's a family man there's only so much that that industry can take out of you before you realize yeah you, you, yeah you, 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 it's um, a lot of time you're gonna find a life somewhere else so when he left he got uh, of course, he got courted by media companies wanting him to present Formula One, and he did Formula E. He did uh, he does the uh, the radio for Formula One. He did he yeah. did all these things, um, and then during that period of time, he got picked up by Discovery Channel to do a sh a, a car show, uh, which was a few years ago. It was called Driving Wild, where Elvis went around the world and explored some of the you know the weird and wacky stuff yep. in the car cultures around the world. Uh, and in two thousand and nineteen. I was, I'd written a show many, many years ago called, uh, it's actually a show I wrote in 2004 uh, called Rex to Riches. Yes, I did it yeah. for ITV. Uh, yeah. uh, and that was basically me buying a car, fixing it up and trading it for another car, fixing that up, trading it yeah, for another car. I was car, actually talking to my dad about this program yeah, literally swap, two swap, days swap ago. Yeah. yeah, and I, I went from a, a 300 quid piece of crap to a brand new Rover. And I gave it away in a competition. Yeah. So I, went, I showed you in eight moves how you could go from 300 quid to a brand new car in eight moves by just buying and selling. And that was genuine, real genuine. Uh, and that show then got repeated again in 2010, 11, 12. Was it as hard as you thought it was going to be or as easy? Uh, no, very, very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> one, of the, one of the toughest jobs you'll ever do. Yeah. I wrote it again, and th this time it was called Trading Up, and it was a global series where I ran around the world trading my way up. I, I traded from $2,000 up to a Porsche uh, convertible in the first series, and then from $2,000 in uh, India, traded my way around the world to a Ferrari 348 in Italy. Yeah, that, I mean, and that I showed you... Uh, yeah. applause, and I, yeah. uh, genuine, all genuine, you know, and I showed you how to do it. And that was high pressure, uh, really difficult series to make. But then um, I, in 2019, I had a natural break uh, of making Wheeler Dealers with Ants. Me and Ant were making the show in America. Uh, we're doing really well. We just made 27 episodes and Ant had got offered... Um, to do something else, so 10 episodes of this uh, Master Mechanic, uh, mm. which Ant was doing, of which I had helped write Master Mechanic. And uh, when that was happening, I had this little break period. So I thought during the break, I could either hang out in LA, which is where I was living at the time, or I could come back to England and 
be with my family and yeah, do something yeah. over here. And uh, I spoke to Discovery Channel in England and said, look, I'm coming back for 10 weeks. Do you want to do you want to do something? And they said, yeah, actually, you know, you're trading up. Do you think you could do trading up for other people? So rather than do it for yourself, yeah, yeah. do it for somebody else. And I said, sure. So we sat and I wrote Dream Car. Uh, now, Dream Car was a series that basically is me buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling. But of course, my mechanic, Ant, is in America doing yeah, his own yeah. show. So I said, well, we're going to have to find somebody to put on a show with me. And they said, well, funny enough, we've been working with this really lovely guy, ex-Formula One mechanic called Elvis. Um, do you want to meet him? And uh, we think you two could work together. So Elvis come down to my garage, my, another one of these garages I've got over in uh, over in uh, Southam near Banbury. And Elvis come over, I had a, an old 1962 Dormobile uh, with sliding doors. <laughs> and the crew put cameras in it. Me and Elvis had this, oh, mate, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. I'll watch your stuff, I'll watch your stuff. We had that <laughs> sort of dogs sniffing each other's asses in the park moment. <laughs> and then when everybody, uh, when we got in the van and drove off and everybody else had disappeared, I pulled out onto the uh, onto the road. And I think within two minutes, he'd farted and I'd farted. <laughs> and, we, and we were meant to be. <laughs> and then and then we, I said something and he said something and we were to the point of tears. And then we get up the road and we spin the car around and we, we're just la we're laughing, engaging. Yeah. We're And it was just brilliant. In fact, we watched it back just recently. We watched it back. And it's like an episode of Wheeler Dealers. It really is. And it was just so good. And I thought, wow, this guy's so lovely and easy to work with and professional yeah, yeah. and understanding and so non-starry. He's completely like me. doesn't yeah. care about fame, fortune, any of that. All he's, is, he's been there, seen everything, but never been. He's like always been the put, uh, just off the shoulder. The shoulder. Person. So all he wants to do is is work and fix cars up. That's all he wants to do. So um, to work with Elvis now is incredible because I've got this. He's we, we become like best mates. Yeah. He's an incredible bloke to work with professionally. He's fantastic in the workshop. Uh, every decision uh, that sort of I'm making car wise. I run it past Elvis and nine times out of 10 with, you know, other guys that I've worked with in the past or the mechanics that are off screen now, I might buy a car and say, look, guys, I'm thinking of buying this, but we got to change the color and it's going to be pulling it apart, put it back together. We're going to do the whole change. And people might, oh, no, no, you can't do that. And if I phone Elvis and say, mate, I'm thinking of buying this, all the team think I'm mad, but what I want to do is pull it apart, yeah. change the color, and put it back together. And Elvis go, sounds really cool. Yeah. yeah. That, sounds, that. that sounds really challenging. He's a yes guy. He's He's like, it sounds really challenging. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, Elvis gives speeches all over the world. He gets flown once or twice a week to the Philippines, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia. But you want somebody Qatar. like that that's literally like, yeah, them crazy ideas. <laughs> Let's do it. Exactly. It well, he, he flies around the world talking about processes in Formula One and team building and all that kind of stuff. So El for Elvis, it was always problem solving working yeah, yeah, at yeah. the top of the game in Formula One. You're problem solving all the time. Uh, once somebody's created a car, you're, you're problem uh, yeah. fixing what's wrong Tweaking with the car it. and why isn't it getting... Why mm. The problem is... Somebody's half a second faster. Yeah. The problem is somebody's yeah. a tenth of a second faster. So Why your problems are eight only. seconds faster or twenty seconds. There's always yeah. a new problem. Yeah, always a new problem. So uh, with me choosing cars and talking to Elvis about it, the problem solving side of Elvis kicks in. He goes, "Yeah, but that's we can fix that. That's, yeah. A, yeah. that's a problem we can fix. That's a simple you know, one. It's a simple one. Everything seems to be really easy and simple with Elvis around." And uh, it's an absolute it's pleasure. It's not, to it's you two just make it that way. Yeah, yeah but uh, no, look, you know, the success is, uh, you know, since Elvis has joined the show, uh, the, the audience, I mean, it was already a massive audience, but yeah, the audience yeah. has stayed with us. Yeah, yeah. You know, nobody switched off. The audience do, do you stayed worry with about us. that when you have them quite valuable changes, uh, uh, key cog is removed? Um, the format yeah, of the show yeah, still of course. When the Ed same, left, but... when Ed left, uh, you know, I, I could definitely see a shift in people's attitude towards the show. Mm. I could see a shift in in the audience, you know, uh, and there was a that most definitely some of the audience would have left, yep. and uh, you know, because they were there just for Ed and fair play, you know, guy was a legend, so they were there just for Ed. Uh, but once we showed it was. I'm going to just say it again. Yeah. It wasn't about us. It's about it the build itself. It was about, about the car. car. It was about, never yeah. about me and Ed. And I kept telling people, you're yeah. missing out. 
you're missing out on this amazing yeah. show because it's not. We just about, had this epic car. We've just done this rebuild. Yes, you, and you missed it. And you missed it because you were tuning in for the for the yeah. people that put it together, not for the car itself. Uh, and if you rethink it, and and I got the audience, I re-educate the audience. But it wasn't about us; it was no, about no. the car. And uh, and that's the same for me and Elvis. You know, me and Elvis, as I say, he's the most non-starry star you've ever met. Elvis. Yeah. He's literally it, the the funniest thing about him is that I'm I'm quite recognisable wherever I go. Yeah. And uh, you know, I get in a date with people wanting a picture, a selfie, or whatever. It's lovely. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, people don't recognize Elvis. No, uh, you know no, they no, don't no. just don't recognize him, and uh, they're even going, "Excuse me, can you take a picture for me?" And they're giving <laughs> him, and I feel really quite sometimes a little bit embarrassed about it. No, he's chill. But I, I could bet, see I Elvis so just chill. going, "Oh, yeah. I love this." He absolutely loves it. You know that people don't pester him. You know, the same but then way Lewis that, Hamilton would be like, "Yeah, come on." <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But he's a uh, he's a lovely guy to work with. And I, uh, to answer your question, I've been very fortunate to work with some. Mm amazing people um and you know who's to say i'm not going to work with somebody else again in the future yeah, yeah of course and i might work with somebody else as i say it's not about me uh it's about the car and, and i think you, it's fair yeah. to say i'm not a star, you know you may consider me a star you i've been star. around for 26 <laughs> years but i'm not really am i i'm just a normal bloke but, but you've got the, a skill it's not like oh, it's not like oh you are famous a normal for being bloke. famous yeah. but this that's is, what makes it so good but you're you are a star to two people but yes but you as you you are just a normal bloke so. which is 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 sick it's awesome. Yeah, well, I don't think so. I just think I'm a normal bloke. I've got a really cool job. That's about it, yeah. really. Yeah. He's, he's like, yep, yeah, got the that's best job in the world. You've nailed yeah, it, have. though. You should, everybody that's doing a job, you should think you have the coolest job in the world. And uh, if yeah. you think don't that, Don't do then... it. Don't do it. If you go to work, yeah. and I'm gonna, this is good advice to give anyone yeah. out there. If you go to work and you hate your job, don't do it. Yeah. I once wrote a series um, that I gave to, funny enough, an American network, but I once wrote a series that... Crush Mike, I need to sit down with you. I love writing and, series. Yeah, I, yeah, I love so, writing I series. series. I gave it laptop. to an American network, which was really good. Uh, and I think they, they it played out one season and it needs to be reinvented. Now's the time for it, which is basically, say when you go into a hairdresser's yeah. and you got the girl in there sweeping up the floor with her yeah. hair. Yeah. What did she really want to do? I bet she really wants to work in that office block across the road and be the receptionist. Well, why don't we give her that job for the day or a week? Let her be oh, the receptionist in that office block for a week and, and, see, and see if that's really what she yeah. wants to do. Or go up to a you know a kid in the street and say, what do you really want to yeah. do? Well, you know, not a kid in the street. Go up to a kid who's working in quick yeah. Euro, or walk who's fitting exhaust and, like, yeah, yeah, on yeah. cars all day. What do you really want to do? Well, I don't want to be fit and exhaust all day. What do you really want to do? Well, what I'd like to be is the pit crew in the Formula One team. Well, Give let's him get him a job as a pit crew for one week in the Formula One team. Make it happen. Yeah. And see if this will change their lives. It will change their scope. I it think will change it'd be their a understanding. Very good experiment. What was, what, what was the this? name of it, Mike? Um, well, like the the series become that came in America. Yeah, it came in America. Uh, it, it changed ever yeah, slightly. Yeah, of course. Uh, but it was called King for a Day. Okay, don't like the name, but we can change. No, that. but it was called King for a Day when it went out. It wasn't called King for a Day when not I your one. Uh, no, it's job 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 swap or job okay, yeah job yeah, swap. Yeah. Uh, but it came king for a day, and the reason was is uh, it evolved into giving somebody a an experience like a kingly experience yes, yeah, yeah. to see if it would change their life. Yeah, you know, take somebody who's a drug addict and uh, take him for dinner at the Dorchester. Yes, and yeah, say yeah. put him in a suit, shave him. Yeah, put him in dinner at the Dorchester, surrounded by nice people, being treated correctly having the respect and would he come out of there and go i'm going to go back to being drug addict or is he going to come out there going i want to change I'm going to, i want that yeah. i'm going to change my life to become that person this this is what i love about doing these podcasts and talking to people like people would recognize your face and know what you are and, and have uh, quite a, a two-dimensional vision of who you are and what you stand for but being able to talk to you and listen to you it's Everybody has so got so many different angles and so many different facets of their personality. It, it makes me so happy. And that you really do. It, it's yeah. brilliant. I love it. Absolutely. Love I, it. I actually like could being, listen to your a, stories you know, all I, day. I, I work in a creative industry, you know, and you do. And uh, I like being creative yeah. and coming up with different ways and different, uh, you know, formats to, to come up with something yeah. that is creative. But at this time in my life, I'm also about giving back and being a bit more philanthropic, uh, philanthropic. Uh, so I'm about, you know, creating ideas for, for other people yeah. and giving ideas for other people. Uh, and I have several times, you know, I've, I've written shows for other people. I've written 
um, a couple of shows that are on TV at the moment, you know, uh, that I've written um, that other people have got and had big success out. I love that. I don't, I don't know how to end this podcast because I could talk all day well, long. Well, let's just I, talk I, all day long. I, yeah. I just, <laughs> let me just settle back in my chair. Yeah. <laughs> Where's so, the recliner? Yeah. I, I feel like I've got to give something, like we came in here, like you're so nice, your wife, uh, your business partner, like they're even cooking bacon and sausage sandwiches, what, <laughs> proper car guy. Yeah, of which you didn't we eat. Uh, we, we, we'd done a full and, uh, on supermarket run. I was good because I got here early, I messaged you and then you were like, don't eat too much, we've got bacon sandwiches on the go. I'm like, I'm fasting this morning. <laughs> I Unbelievable! Was was you heartbreak. two hell freaks. And the thing is that I'm healthy, not. Yeah. I'm normally a bacon sandwich and egg guy <laughs> with a beer as well. <laughs> okay, so I, I feel like the, my final question, maybe for, from myself anyway, personally, Curtis, is kind of like, what's the one thing that you're kind of most passionate about that maybe people wouldn't know? Because most people do know a lot about your TV life and and what you've achieved, but what's the one thing you kind of you you go home, you're well, like, I'm happy I did this. Uh, well, the one thing that I'm most passionate about is is family, yeah. right? Okay, and friends, family and friends. You know, I'm Wait, a very does loyal. Your daughter like cars? Is, uh, is she... she she does. Uh, she does like cars. She actually works for this company as well. She does. Uh, she, she's a digital. She's got her own digital marketing company, oh, and awesome. she does all the digital. What everything you see here, all yes. the banners, all the signs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're all from my daughter, and she does yeah. it for other clients well, as well. Uh, yeah, she's a very clever girl. Um, no, for me, my passion really, uh, the, it, it, it is family. Yeah. It's family and friends. I've got an amazing group of friends around me, amazing family, and it's all about them. That's my one driving factor. Um, but if there's something that I'm missing, I don't know. I've sort of achieved everything, and I'm doing everything that I want to do. I suppose... I love that. No, yeah, you, you, no, you've I'm doing everything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's quite a good place to be. It's a great place to be. If I could do anything else, and yeah, if it, it wasn't is, anything to do with cars, what would you have done? It'd just spend more time with Michelle. That's yeah. the one thing. Yeah. You know, Michelle's given up her life for my life. And uh, we've been together 34 years, me and Michelle. 34 years. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. It's a long time, isn't it, for a relationship. And we're insanely crazy about each other. But you get on like a house of fire. You still, I love you, you that. Still Your today. relationship is brilliant. And when yeah. we're on the podcast, I was like, yeah. this is sick. Yeah, I yeah, love it's, it. it's insane that we've got this amazing relationship. So for me, I think it would just be, if I had a chance now, it would be to spend more time with Michelle. Yeah. In fact, I've just done a, a full um, Volkswagen transporter conversion with a company called Camper King. Uh, to do a state-of-the-art sort of camper conversion. Oh, yeah. So me and Michelle, she doesn't really when, like the when idea. When's that coming out, is it? Or is it? Done? I've got it. I've got, got the conversion. It. Got it. So, so me and Michelle can this. hit yeah. the open road and just spend a bit more time together uh, yeah. on the open road. We just yeah. we did 32 days doing a Californian road trip last month together, and we come back still married. 34 <laughs> days, 32 days in a car, uh, all day, 10 hours a day. How was the road trip amazing? It was amazing. Yeah, it was absolutely lovely. brilliant because we did some We've brilliant. Been saying we need to we need to do a road trip or something. Do a road trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Do a, do I love a, it. Absolutely do a road trip. I really, I, I want to be very cliche and do Route 66. Yeah, but Route 66 just, is, uh, what the, you, you can extend. Only be cool. Sounds very no, do, boring. Do, extend, extend Route 66 where it won't become boring. Do uh, ocean to ocean. So you take a bottle of water, a plastic, empty yeah. plastic bottle, drop it in the, in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> this is cool. Yeah, and then do the whole journey from New York, get in a car. Have I said that right way around? Um, no, do, Wait, uh, no, not yeah. the Atlantic, is it? Yeah, no. You're asking the wrong person here. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I've got it wrong, haven't I? Wait, wait. Uh, yes, <laughs> Atlantic no, Ocean's no. on the other coast, isn't it? I've got but a anyway, in my life uh, now. Yeah, just pick up a bottle of water, <laughs> drive it across America, and drop it in the other ocean. Yeah, and uh, and then you take in Route 66 as you're doing it. That's very, uh, yeah. and you end up at the end of Santa Monica Pier. So end up uh, start yeah, North off, Atlantic, North Atlantic, yeah, take it to the Pacific. To on the other Pacific. Side. Yeah. So you North Atlantic, empty bottle of plastic water, uh, Coney Island in New York. <laughs> go and get that. <laughs> Get in the car, <laughs> go all the way across America, Chicago, then Route 66, end up at Santa Monica yeah. Pier and drop it in the ocean that, that, there. And that's uh, an amazing trip, an amazing thing to do. But obviously, document it so yeah. we can all yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Uh, you two in a motorhome going across America. <laughs> Chaos. Big <be> Chaos. <laughs> Me and Richard Hammonds are working on a series together. 
uh, at the moment. And me and Richard are going to be doing just that. We're going to oh, get an awesome. old beaten up motorhome <laughs> and we're going to travel uh, across some of America. Well, if looking you need at the two wall, people to come and cause I, a I literally sent him a message, on, on, I think, the other day. I was like, so Richard, when are you doing the podcast? Him come somewhere. on. We'll, uh, we'll I'll, do I'll something. get Richard doing the podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's brilliant. Uh, but me and Richard have been talking last just last week. Uh, we had a conversation about putting this... Uh, That'd be cool. About, be about really putting cool, this show actually. together. Yeah. And um, we also... I, I fancy buying... A Breaking Bad motorhome. Stop it. Yeah. You know, Proper. just something yeah, that's yeah, real, yeah. absolutely. Okay, I've now, my, so this is in my brain now. Richard and yourself, would you do a little little collab through his two TV shows, your TV show his, like a, a rebuild of something like... Well, we're both on the same network. Something, yeah, something very like, I don't know, like a, a Christmas <laughs> special or unicorn car, something it, that's like... You know, like... all those things are always a great <laughs> idea. We was always in the past, Wheeler Dealers was going to do a collaboration with... Because I feel uh, like you're not, you're not garage, like, fast and loud. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, with Richard, and we were always going to do a collab. Yeah. But it's just a, a matter of networks agreeing that clashing diaries together. That's back um, to the. That's the why I say a Christmas business, special because right? a Christmas yeah. special is really you good. You film it somewhere random at a random time of year and be like, okay. But we'll me put and it Richard are destined to, you know, we, I've known Richard for twenty five years, um, yeah. long before his Top Gear career. Um, you know, I was part I feel like of that. You two that. together would be. It's quite funny. Yeah, us good two together would be, quite funny. Would be yeah. very good yeah. together. Right, I've got to finish off with one last question. Here yes, we go. Yes, it is. What's your dream car and what car are you driving? So, I knew you were going to say that. That's like well, the most. The thing is, but, we are. I want to know the answer. Yeah, that's the thing. I want to simply know it. What is your dream car and what you're driving now? Right. Dream car is a, a question that I get asked a lot. And it's uh, people expect people like us to go, oh, it's a Ferrari 250 GTO. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People expect Short us wheel to say base that. Short wheel base uh, Ferrari. But it's not. It's a, I've got my dream car. It's a 1964 Mini Cooper S. Right, yeah. that's my dream okay. car. It's amazing. You'll I'm so never happy feel. You said something you'll like never color? feel as I've got almond green, white roof. Ooh, uh, almond, green. almond green, absolutely yeah. amazing car. Um, and you'll never feel more connected to a car I presume on you the do road. Put the miles on it, you. Yeah, I mean, you can drive the thing. You drive yeah. the tits off the thing, and it won't fall over. Every time um, I, I you hear I, someone says like a mini, I just can't think. Goodwood of Revival when the minis are flying around them corners. That's I'm amazing. Oh my God. It's amazing. Oh, it's phenomenal. Yeah, amazing. They are. So phenomenal. an original mini uh, is my dream car. I've also just bought a nine six four turbo. Yes. Yeah. It's another dream car, which is uh, I'm very excited about. Uh, and what I'm driving now is I've got a, a bunch of cars that I'm sort of jumping in and out of. Uh, today I've turned up in the new Ford Ranger Raptor pickup truck um, <laughs> because that's a good weapon and a good thing. How, for, how is that to actually drive? It's I'm, great I'm because actually... it's the uh, it's the three liter twin turbo. Ah, I see, yeah. Uh, it's petrol. It's got sounds like a V8. Uh, it's got exhaust modes. V6 though, isn't it? It's a V6. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it sounds yeah. like a V8 because yeah, it's got yeah. exhaust modes on it. Uh, it's absolutely incredible thing, and it looks like an F150 at the front. Yeah. So looks really cool. I've got a Porsche Taycan that I've been using. Uh, my personal car as well. How, I like how, that. How, 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 to, how to do the Raptor? <laughs> how do you find the um, the charging for it? Uh, the charging the network is absolutely crap. It's yeah, rubbish it's awful, and it's yeah, awful. It yeah. And the stress that it causes is too much. Uh, and it ruins the experience of owning an electric car. Yeah. But is um, it a great car to drive? Though? It's an amazing car yeah, drive because yeah. I've so also, good. you know, yeah, had yeah. things like, you know, new 992s and stuff like that. And, yeah. been, uh, but, you know, I, I recently did a head-to-head -head in a 992 Turbo S against my Taycan. And truthfully, when you're inside the two cars, other than the noise, same steering wheel, same sort of cockpit, same so dash. The Porsche have yeah, done it good with they've the done, Taycan. They've done it really good. Yeah. It felt great, you know, felt really good. Uh, however, um, it comes down to that charging network yeah, and it's, and it's just rubbish. Yeah. It's absolutely rubbish. Yeah. And so much so that I think this is my first and only electric car <laughs> until I'm forced and, at some yeah. point in the future. Until 2030, yeah. yeah, yeah, until, yeah. until yeah. I'm forced to have an electric I, car, I, yeah. I feel like by that point we'll be, like at Festival Speed recently, like everything was just hydrogen. We were pushing hydrogen. It was there's, really- It'd be hydrogen two, powering batteries. Yeah. There's two things that I hope they don't get rid of. F1, pinnacle of motorsport. I do. It's renewable fuel, so I I'll hope always they never get rid of that way. engine. And rallying as well. I hope they never get yeah, rid well, of it. Yeah, well, they've got down on, on bio oil. Yeah. Uh, 
the WRC. Yeah, but look, an F one yeah. car is a one point six. Who yeah. would think that's yeah. a one point six liter engine? You know, and a still sounds great, but they don't sound like they. I prefer no, that's two car and, and a, well, rally cars are now little, you know, one point sixes as well. Mm. They're just little engines, and they will come down to one liter engines in the future. You know, a, <laughs> it just sounds <laughs> wrong, doesn't it? When you say one liter, I just think like that crazy. eco boost or something. <laughs> it will, yeah. crazy. you know, Formula One will be a three cylinder. One litre running on renewable fuels and a big battery, you know, but it can't become completely got electric because noise, we've already though. got the Formula E. Formula e. Yeah, spot. and that, yeah. that series is a, unless you put Lewis Hamilton but, and, you yeah, know, Stappen in a Formula E car. Circuits, so hey, you've got actual Formula E still got you. stopped by Just Stop Oil somehow. I don't even know how that one worked. But yeah. Formula E got stopped by Just Stop Oil. Yeah, they came Shut on up. the track. <laughs> Shut and, up. And the that shows you how dumb they are. I was like, I, 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 that's the dumbest thing I've I ever think heard. Alejandro, Seriously. Yeah, yeah. I think Alejandro with his whole kind of um, sustain. I was like, I think you got the wrong race. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It was Formula E got stopped by and, just and they, stop oil. they ran on the track and sat in front of them before they did the start line. <laughs> It was, it was, it was, the oh, irony of it was just that cracking is, me that is, It's like when they went and sat on a snooker table at the World Championship. Yeah. What? <laughs> and it's like, it. what a snooker but they've got concreted to do the hands. I know we concreted the hands to the airport floor. <laughs> oh, really? We sidestrived this slightly, but in London the other day, 10 Just Stop Oil people <laughs> circled the other Just Stop Oil people so they wouldn't stand in the road. So they would sit on the sideline. <laughs> no, and it, it was, was Just Stop Taking the Piss. No, it was, they, but they had Just Stop Oil on. No, they had Just Stop Taking, taking the, the piss. piss. I love that. And, and, I love and it. And then they surrounded all of the Just Stop Oil people. That's what they did. Oh, no, we side swiped to this point. We've lost yeah. it. They are I love a it. race all to themselves. And uh, I know yeah. that they're protesting for something that we do need to address. You yeah, know, yeah. What's happening? Course. It's, yeah, it's yeah. July. It's pouring down with rain and roads is on fire at the moment. <laughs> yeah. um, but there is a different way to protest. Yeah. Don't glue yourself to a motorway. Don't glue yourself to a... to a. a you know, if it was anywhere else in the world, I'd love it. If the Just Up Oil people <laughs> went to France and did it in Paris, <laughs> uh, you, please do it there because the I'd German, like to see... Oh the Germans he would turn just the be, heating down, turn the lights oh, off. That's what the Germans and then, did. And in then the they Porsche said, dealership. Yeah, in the Porsche. <laughs> they just turned the lights off and went and home. And they said, come out the toilet. So they went, no, no, you've, you've done this yourself. <laughs> no, no. That's exactly right. So uh, I know that we need to address this, but there's a we different do. forum yeah. and a different yeah. way of doing it instead of gluing yourself to, to things <laughs> and uh, ruining sporting events. You know, yeah. sporting mm. events like snooker and, as you say, Formula E. And tennis. Got, and tennis. They've got nothing to do with it. You know, it's absolutely... No. Uh, and you're sending the wrong message and you're making people hate you. It's like an anti People anti absolutely hate you yeah, for what you're doing. Thing. And that's the worst thing that you want as a as a movement, as yeah. a body. People now just laugh at them and hate them. You've for become what in a doing stag do, like the guy at the F1, he got screwed over it. They put him in a t-shirt of the stag do and the police just took him out straight away. <laughs> Did what? Just the boils? Yeah, <laughs> mate. yeah his mates made oh, him no, wear now, that. Now, yeah. now, see, that's just become stigma, isn't it? Yeah. Just, just a boil t-shirt. So no, do it correctly. Do it the right way. Go and protest with your your MPs yes. and your government yeah. don't go and do it and ruin people's lives it's 100%. just ridiculous really honestly is. Mike please is, is there anywhere you can hand off for your socials or your website or promote this business or all yeah. to be honest, all yeah, of your well, thank you thank you for that this is uh, One Automotive this is based in Warwick this is uh, uh, a little venture that me and Michelle have got with our buddy James uh, we supply great and, guys yeah. uh, great guys yeah, yeah. we supply uh, uh, quality used vans and cars in the Leamington and Warwickshire area and they look so awesome a visit they do look awesome yeah. uh we've got mike brewer motors which is up in sheffield our big dealership uh if you're looking for a car that's nearly new and uh, got the manufacturer's warranty uh we are 99.9 percent .9 customer satisfaction rating one, rated the best one dealership. dealership of the year didn't it? Uh, one yeah. dealership of the year voted best dealership uh, yeah. by independently by uh independent bodies so please go and pay us a visit um, if you want to find me, I'm on all forms of social media. It's Mike Brewer on Twitter and Instagram. It pops up everywhere. It uh, pops yeah. up everywhere. And uh, Wheeler Dealer on Facebook. And uh, please come follow up my beautiful wife, Michelle, at Mrs. M Brewer across awesome, social yeah. media. And you've got a YouTube She's channel. The nicest that's the woman good, yeah. you'll ever meet. She is. She's well, lovely. thank you very much. Yeah. And it's been such an honor to have you two down here. You're, you're proper superstars. And you, are, you have got the right work ethic. You're just doing everything perfectly. And I wish you every success for the future. No, honestly, it's be yeah. Cheers, Mike. Thank we'll, you. We will yeah, definitely yeah. do this this again in the future. When yeah, we'll have to come back on something. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to come back on um, Wheeler Dealer as well. Yeah, you when need to get Elvis. That's show. what you need to get. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, I'll hook you up with Elvis because be cool. uh, listen, yeah. you, talk to him about you know Formula One and processes yeah. and uh, team even though building. It's just the end of a day dinner, I'll just turn up just for that. I'll drive wherever just yeah. for that conversation. <laughs> It'd be brilliant. Yeah, yeah, we'd love to have you. Ah, cheers, Mike. Thank you so much. Been great. Thanks for listening, guys. I hope you enjoyed the podcast and. Please, yeah, please that. comment and please leave a review because yeah. it does mean a lot and the algorithm helps. And please, and thank you very much to our sponsor, Fin Financial Investment. Like for us, that is a massive thing. Don't forget and to like, follow, education. ring the bell, subscribe. Do it yeah. all, Do literally, it all. yeah. Yeah, ring the bell, like, subscribe, <laughs> ding, follow. Yeah, share it to a friend. I was going <laughs> to name all the social medias and add them on, but I think Threads has now gone off the road, so we don't need to add that one on there anymore. Oh yeah, touchy subject, that one. But Fin, the financial investment app that makes investing easy. That's That sounded quite catchy, actually. You can leave that in there. Yeah. No, honestly, yeah, no, thank you so much. (laughs) Just before you go anywhere, we just want to say thank you very much to listen to Freedom Impact Trust. We love your reviews, so please do leave them because it helps other people find us, doesn't it, Curtis? Yes, it does. As AJ said, comment, like, subscribe, Mm. share it with a friend, share it with the entire world. Let everybody know that this is the podcast that you guys are listening to and jot down some comments of any financial advice that you want or any questions, we'll be happy to answer all of them at the best of our knowledge. Thanks again for listening, guys. We hope you've enjoyed it and we love you all. Yeah, we just want to thank our sponsors, Fint, the financial investment app where you can invest from as little Mm. as £50 a month. Yes, Curtis, £50 a month, so easy. I like it. And don't forget that it's all within three portfolios. Simplicity, it's easy. Get investing, guys. Have a great day. See you later.